Okay, I'll introduce you. I mean, I think there is a very nice debate that's coming along. Uh, the first one is going to take uh, Ajay Kirtani, uh, who is uh, from Columbia University. Carries a lot of titles, but for now, he has to convince us that imaging in PCI is overrated. I'm not sure he's believing in that based on his practice, but he would have to convince us that, at least for the sake of the debate. Well, thanks, Ron. So um, I will start by, um, these are just research-related disclaimers, but probably the most important practical disclaimers are, number one, Columbia uses imaging in greater than 90% of our PCIs, and number two, of my last 100 cases, I did not use imaging in exactly two cases, both of which I remember. One was with distal tortuosity because of diffuse disease, so the risk was going to be higher than the benefit. And the other was simultaneous STEMIs two weekends ago on a Saturday because of time and resource. So the fact that I was assigned this talk must mean that the organizers, thank you, Roxana, feel I'm a, just such a superior debater that I can take whatever side I need. So. Let's start off with, first, what's the most overrated imaging test in the cath lab? And I'm going to say it's actually the coronary angiogram. So I was asked to debate whether imaging is overrated, and I will say the angiogram is completely overrated. And there are limits of visual estimation. This is a nice slide from Martin Thomas, where if you look at this, there look to be curves. But yet, actually, all the lines are straight. The reason there are curves are because of the dots. And the exact same thing happens in the cath lab when you have a patient with a 60% lesion, diabetic, PVD, typical symptoms, that 60 is called a 90 and people put stents in. That exact same angiogram in a woman with GERD, classic reflux responsive to omeprazole, gets called a 50 and gets left alone. So the angiogram is completely subjective in clinical practice, and that's why it's overrated. And there's actually data to support this. If you look at the FAME trial, this was a very important analysis done where a lot of these lesions that we call significant actually are not by physiology. And it goes beyond just multivessel disease, the left main. Look at these left mains on the top. This is a Gary Mintz old slide. Some of them look tight. Some of them don't look tight. You actually put the IVUS down, and the ones that look tight are not tight. The ones that aren't are. And it's completely arbitrary. You don't know what you're seeing when you actually think you do. There are people who use imaging to, um, to size vessels. So if you use IVUS and say, and this is one of the ways I think, think it is overrated, if you use IVUS to decide I'm going to stent this LED because the luminary is 3.3, well, it turns out vessels taper. So if you don't account for that fact and you just sort of use an arbitrary cut point in the mid-LED to stent, it's a gratuitous shamuloplasty, in my opinion. You shouldn't be doing it, and you should actually look at the physiology. This is a great case. I remember this case. This patient came to see me. I did this angiogram. I actually called for the rotoblader. They brought it in the room. And then I remember the reason the patient was there was because the patient had, an abnormal, had a normal stress test, had a CTA that was done, and showed some plaque, but there didn't appear to be uh, anything terrible. He had a normal exercise tolerance, and I actually did FFR of this lesion, and you may think I'm insane for having done it, but actually the FFR was fine. I left it alone. Two weeks later, the patient had a retinal bleed, and had I put him on Plavix, he would have lost sight in his eye. And in fact, because I left it alone, he was able to get this treated. So just because it looks severe doesn't mean it is, and so I would actually say the angiogram was overrated. A final case I'll show you in this regard, this is a patient who is referred as a second opinion, tight circumflex, the right's known to be occluded, there's intermediate disease in the LAD, she's diabetic. So what do you do with this patient? This is what the LED angiogram looked like. Well, most labs around the country, because physiology is totally underutilized, would eyeball that LED and say, she's diabetic, let's send the patient to surgery. Or they would say, well, it's not that bad, let's just leave it alone and just treat the CERC. So, Again, imaging by itself, completely overrated. What you need to do is actually do physiology. In this case, she was actually in the study of CathWorks. We did CathWorks, FFR, IFR, everything was correlative, and we left it alone, treated the CERC. She's doing great, symptom-free, and has not had any side effects since then. So beyond that, let's go to intravascular imaging, because it's important to discuss that, because I know that's what the uh, purpose of this debate was. So three common beliefs regarding it is that I'm experienced, I, my outcomes are great, there's not adequate data. So I trained in a cath lab that used very little imaging. I came to Columbia, I learned how to do imaging, and now I use imaging in almost every one of my cases. This issue of there isn't adequate data can be addressed by this slide, which I encourage you all to take the slides home, read them uh, line by line, and you can determine where the data is, and this is before renovate complex PCI. This doesn't need to be argued. There's clear data demonstrating that imaging improves outcomes. Now, what about this issue of time and effort for most patients? 
Yeah, it's true that for the average type A lesion, is there going to be a marginal benefit of imaging? Maybe, maybe not. But I always get back to this existential question because I think it's important when we treat our patients. If your mom was having a PCI, wouldn't you want the interventionalist doing it to use adjunctive imaging just to be sure? Now, anyone who does not want their mom to have imaging during their PCI, please raise their hand. And if you raise it, it means you don't like your mom. So the bottom line is if you would want that for your mom, then why aren't you doing it for your own patients? I actually think it's completely legitimate currently to have a patient ask you as an interventionist, are you going to use adjunctive imaging during my pace if you're going to do PCI? And if the image, and if the, sorry, if the interventionist says no, I would say find a different interventionist. And I do this frequently with family members of mine. So I think that's important. Finally, this issue of it's hard for me to figure out what I'm looking at so it's easiest for me to fall back on my experience with angiography is the real reason why imaging is underutilized. And we don't talk about this enough, but traditional imaging looks like that. It looks like that with a catheter that barely crosses. We always say image in calcified lesions, and the catheter du jour in most labs doesn't even cross the calcified lesion. But conventional imaging actually looks like that. A lot more easy to determine exactly what's going on if you have the adequate training. And that's one of the reasons why we wrote this document um, from the American College of Cardiology's Interventional Council. This was not the standard imaging publishing group. These were clinicians who take care of patients. In fact, some of the imagers got mad at me and they said, how come I'm not on this paper? And we wanted this to be a clinically oriented paper. And what we said is that it's an essential adjunct to angiography for specific lesion subsets, anything complicated. But we also said, if you only use it in complicated lesions, you have no idea what you're looking at. So you have to use it in simpler lesions so you understand what's going on. And at the bottom, we talk about training because the current training consensus of 25 cases of imaging is just woefully inadequate to be able to actually know what you're doing when you're doing these tough cases. So to summarize, I would start by saying all imaging is overrated if we don't use our clinical judgment. Number two, the angiogram alone has much broader limitations than most interventionalists admit and is therefore perhaps the most overrated imaging modality of all. Even in that last case scenario, we heard people saying, well, if you blow up the balloon and there's good expansion. We've all been in situations where we thought there was good expansion and we had to rotoblade out the stent afterwards. That simple fact should give us pause. Imaging has evolved, and while not every patient is going to derive clear benefit, we have no way of knowing who's going to derive benefit and whose stent is going to be underexpanded unless we actually image and know what we're looking at, so we have to be trained. And so finally, I would end by just saying learn how to use all tools, but be careful and sensible, but not dogmatic in their use. So I'm not saying use it in every case. There are clearly cases where it's a risk to the patient. There are clearly cases where you don't have the time to do it. I even mentioned that left main scenario earlier. But I do think that it needs to be used more frequently. So I hope that was all right, even though I argued the other side as well. Thanks so much.